used to sing with the scholars. We now call ourselves the Plain Folk. We're in uh, Jack Strike's house in uh, Orange, Connecticut, here with Bill McGoy and Jack, his wife Kathy Scott. Hello, Al. How you doing? Happy birthday. Al, happy 80th. Gosh, 80. Oh, 80 big ones. Many, many more. Yes, many, many more. We figure that uh, you're getting a lot of cards, getting a lot of letters, probably not getting too many tapes like this. Let's, uh, why don't we do a couple numbers for you, Al. Uh, we're going we're gonna to experiment a couple numbers with you, actually one number, and then we're going to do something that you might re be identifying with uh, our history with the Glee Club. And uh, this first number is uh, called Harmony. Uh, I'd just like to say that this is our newest song, and as I'm sure you can appreciate more than anybody, the newest thing you do is always the most fun thing you do. Yes, sir. <laughs> That's called harmony. Not bad for a run through. I didn't hear any applause, Al. Was it no applause? <laughs> that end, you know, we got we got kind of used to hearing that. It's very difficult to play to a camera without any feedback. By the way, Al, I wanted to bring greetings and regards from Sue Shuttleworth Lefevre, who is <coughs> who is my wife. Uh, you remember her dad, Riley Shuttleworth, her mom, Mary Bell. Uh, they send the regards as well. They're all doing fine. And along with us, send happy birthday wishes. Gosh, 80. I want to say a couple more words. I'll hunk around over here. Just like to wish you happy 80 also, Al. And just share one of the, the little things that, that we kind of run into. We, we haven't done much as a trio over the last several years, but starting last November we had a show and we've gotten fairly active again. And uh, other than the fact that people come up and, and tell you how nice the music sounds and, and how great you are and all that sort of thing, one of the things that I hear more than often is how much you seem to enjoy the music, and that's one of the things that I'd like to thank you for, is, is giving us the opportunity to really enjoy the music that we do. Al, happy 80th. I guess that's called being an octogenarian, 80th birthday. That's what it is. Yes. Yeah, amazing. I'll figure it out when I get there. Octogenarian, yes. Uh, and like Tom, I'd like to express uh, our birthday wishes to you, that ours being Kathy Scott, whom I married, and was a member of the Purduettes in, through 1969, I believe. Uh, she, by the way, is filming this, and she preferred to stay out of the picture, I guess, because she wanted control of what we had to say here. Uh, but, uh, by the way, we have three children now, um, and Tom has two. two, and Bill has two. two. So uh, we're building our forces, getting ready to send them back to Purdue to be part of the Purdue musical organization someday. And, uh, and from some of the conversations from my children, I'm sure that they think that that's part of their destiny because we, they find music to be so integral to our lives. And I thank you for that. I, you know, I always enjoyed music, but I never enjoyed it as much as when I was part of your organization. And uh, so thank you very much. Um, as I recall, the um, before you get into the song, I was going to say something else. Sure, do it. Can I do that now? Yeah, please. you're getting ready to get into the song. Right? No, but that's, <laughs> oh. yeah, please take it. We're trying. By the way, we're trying to be spontaneous and, and not do this on multi-record. Uh, you know, wait till it's just perfect, so you can kind of get a, a sense of of us in a real situation and not in a contrived, uh, modeled situation. By now, he so, knows that. Yeah. So. Uh, Tom, now he's going to interrupt me, so go ahead. Sorry. <laughs> uh, sometimes, uh, rather than rehearsing something to say, you find what there is to say in little circumstances on the way uh, to church this morning. Uh, our eight-year-old son was kind of left out of the conversation because Sue and I were talking about what we were going to be doing today. And he didn't even know whose birthday it was for. And I put it to him like this, and I think you can express better the sentiment that we're trying to express, or at least for me, than, it, than if I try to find some flowery words, which you're getting too many of by now anyway, probably. Uh, and that is that there's a man, David, my son, who 
was the choir director of a group that your dad used to sing in back at Purdue, and that your mom used to sing in back at Purdue, and that your grandpa Shuttleworth used to sing in back at Purdue, and your grandma Shuttleworth used to sing in back at Purdue. And this man taught us a lot about music, and a lot about teamwork, and a lot about excellence, doing things well. And his name is Albert Stewart. You're that guy. And a lot of us owe you a great deal about things. We were all musicians before we got there to varying extents. It's not our love of music that we owe you. It is what you helped us do with that love, to focus that love, to get to a level of excellence in performance and pride about ourselves and being part of a team that really made it unique. It made it unique in the state, and in my experience, it made it unique in anything I've encountered. And it spins off in so many ways, I won't bore you with any more. But that's it, that's the idea. Teamwork, excellence, and continuity in families. He's touched a lot of families. Yeah. Well, as, as is obvious, I guess, from the fact that the three of us who uh, stood together in front of you 23 years ago? About 23, 23 years ago. When started, we started 23 yeah. years ago. That, that this experience in the musical, uh, Purdue Music Organization generated a lot of friendships as well as uh, very strong ties, i.e. marriages. Uh, we owe our friendship, our continuation of the friendship to, I think, the musical thread. There are probably a lot of philosophies that we don't necessarily share that if it hadn't been for music, we probably wouldn't necessarily be friends after 23 years to the degree that we are. So uh, we feel very, you know, very, um, I guess, beholding to you for, for making that kind of a tie and friendship for us. Grateful. It's a, it's a good grateful. Thing. Very grateful. Mm -hmm. And now, Al, uh, <clears throat> I don't want to prolong this whole thing. We, uh, it's my recollection, it's not Tom's, Tom doesn't seem to recall this, but it's my recollection that when we sang for you, uh, then known as the, the Scholars, there was an occasion when we came into your office, brought you in a couple numbers that we thought were pretty spectacular, and they probably weren't. <laughs> uh, Just a minute. <laughs> <laughs> they were probably okay for us. Guys, you need to leave us alone, okay? Some of our children are kind of uh, trying to get to be part of the act here. Um, while we were putting on our audition of these numbers, you uh, said, hey guys, why don't you try Why don't you try a number that uh, Frank Sinatra has done recently uh, called Very Good Year. And as I remember it, we took that literally. We went back to the, my, my apartment or wherever, <laughs> and we spent the weekend digging up the words of that song and putting it together. And I recall that we went in to see you the next week with it in a performing state. Monday morning. Probably Monday morning first thing. Right, that was probably it. And I remember your uh, being taken with our intensity or our excitedness with responding to something that you thought was good. We thought it was good after we did it, but initially it, it did occur to us to be an, uh, an option for us musically. So anyway, that song has carried a thread of emotion for the three of us through these 23, 24 years to the point of uh, on almost every occasion where we do a serious show to close the show with the number. It usually is very, uh, it, it's a very punctuated idea of, or philosophy of, of uh, passing through our time in this little stage of life. And we enjoy it a lot, and we're going to try and do it for you. When I was 